Hi, this is uh, Albert van Dijk, and in this video uh, I want to talk a little bit about satellite image classification because that is one of the um, <clears throat> more common uses of satellite imagery uh, is to you know identify objects or or say different land cover types and so on on the uh, on the Earth and uh, produce maps uh, of uh, those different units or objects. Um, so um, the way you do that is, of course, you look at the pixels in the image and then you try to group them. Now you can, our eye is actually very trained to do that, so we can very easily do that by eye. You know, you take a look at this uh, right image here, which is from uh, Kyola uh, campus. Uh, uh, you might have seen it in a previous course. Uh, and you know, by eye you can sort of already interpret where are the buildings, where's the road, where's the car park, where the trees and so forth. And of course you can draw lines around that. Uh, and that's definitely one way of classification. Probably one of the more accurate ways of classification, in fact. But um, it's also an awful lot of work uh, uh, because um, you know there's a, th that is not an automated way. So people have been working on automated methods for image, image classification for a long time, uh, and they broadly fall into two groups: the supervised classification, where we first uh, decide the, uh, the the types of land cover, or, or let's say, or, or types of surfaces that we want to identify in the image. Uh, or on the other hand, you can uh, work with unsupervised classification, in which uh, case you let the algorithm work out what are the distinct uh, um, pixel types, you know, what are the distinct spectral signatures uh, in the uh, in the image, and uh, work out a classification from there. And then once you've got those different units, you can uh, cross-reference that uh, with um, what you see uh, in field and truth. So three different kinds: visual, supervised, and unsupervised. Uh, uh, digital classification. Now, um, just to uh, give you a, a bit of a, a workflow, if you like, of the unsupervised and supervised classification process. As I said, you know, you you separate your data into groups with clustering. That's if you do an unsupervised classification, and then uh, you uh, try and figure out what it means. You know, the computer has mapped groups for you, and you have to decide what those groups are. Uh, and if you don't like what the computer did, you're going to have to change some of the parameters that went into it. Uh, and try and do it again. Uh, the other hand, uh, the, uh, the supervised classification, we find some training pixels uh, that represent a known land cover type, let's say, uh, and then uh, we work uh, with a method that, it, that looks at all the other pixels and works out how close they are in spectral properties to the uh, training pixels that we chose. And uh, if we like uh, what the computer did with that, and we might use some method like k-means or whatever, uh, some of these methods have been discussed in the previous course, uh, then we can accept it, and else we might have to um, tell the computer to tell to do something uh, slightly different. So here's an example from from the uh, previous course where you see the results of the classification for Coyolo. So you see, um, in this case, a, a, a training pixels help to um, to uh, class classify at least some of the images. You see, the pasture is quite easily recognized, uh, but some of the other uh, uh, land cover types might be too far from the training pixels to be classified. Uh, and, and generally, we might not be too happy with uh, the way that turn, this turned out, so we might have to look at some other way of uh, classification. So it's a bit of an iterative process, usually regardless of whether it is supervised or unsupervised. Uh, here's another example at much larger scale. So here's uh, the question was, uh, we want to know uh, uh, where the areas are in Australia that do not have vegetation. And we want to know, uh, in a broad sense, what kind of surfaces they are. Uh, 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 and, and, and I guess by implication why they don't have vegetation. So this uh, was an exercise in trying to classif cl classify unvegetated areas. And the way that, that was done is uh, we used uh, permanent water bodies to map out where we know water bodies are. Obviously they are unvegetated. Um, we use uh, uh, land cover mapping to work out where the salt lakes are. They're classed in their own. We used uh, uh, digital elevation model information to work out where are uh, craggy mountains versus uh, flat floodplains and so on. Uh, we use uh, greenness from uh, from uh, the motor satellite to tell us where where there is a lot or not a lot of vegetation. And then we use some pre-existing information of where urban areas are. And then we can design by hand a decision tree. Uh, we can say, uh, well, if uh, the uh, motor data set it's water, then surely it's water. If the uh, if it's not water but it's land a salt lake, then we classify it as a salt lake. Uh, if it's not a salt lake, uh, we might look at, uh, you know, is it is it green or is it not green, and so forth and so forth. And so we end up with these different classification 
uh, decision uh, decisions and, and generate this decision tree and that ultimately gives us this map showing sandy uh, 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 areas without vegetation in yellow colors, rock outcrops in, in magenta colors, water in bluish colors and so on. So just as an example. Now as you saw before, uh, if you work with individual pixels you can, some, can get some pretty noisy results and often what we want to produce in the end is a map uh, that looks a bit clean uh, or maybe we're going to identify individual objects and, and, and uh, for that reason often uh, uh, a method gets used is called segmentation. So when we do segmentation we don't immediately compare every pixel to some training pixels but first we're going to classify the, uh, the adjoining pixels into clusters with similar properties. And that's what you see in the top image here. To some extent you see that the, uh, this, this is the original image. You can classify that in similar units with these uh, that's what these lines represent you see the lines here again and then we can use the properties of that particular polygon uh, so not the one pixel but the collection of pixels we can uh, try and decide what it is and so in this case the red is obviously buildings uh, and uh, we've classified the uh, trees into two groups probably then, uh, uh, depending on how shady or unshady they are here's another example as you can see uh, we can we can see the buildings they have different uh, polygons uh, from the uh, some of the other land units and uh, would probably be straightforward to classify this into buildings and not buildings and roads and so forth on the base of colors uh, uh, alone already. And here's another example where you use a similar method but in this case to uh, identify individual trees. So that's another way you can use segmentation to, to do that. So segmentation is the first step in classification. It can be very handy to, to create a nice clean map if you like. Uh, and that's probably all I really want to say about classification. Uh, there's a lot more to it and it's almost worth a, 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 a course in its own right, uh, but um, this is probably enough for the purposes of understanding how to classify remote sensing image, images.